Hey guys, today I'll be solving problem number 51 on the code called N Queens. And the problem states that the N Queens problem puzzle is the problem of placing N Queens on an N by N chessboard such that no two Queens are attacking each other. So given the integer N, we turn all the distinct solutions to the N Queens puzzle. Each solution contains a distinct board configuration of n queens placements where q and dot both indicate a queen and an empty space respectively. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with chess, um, a queen can attack um, horizontally, uh, vertically, or diagonally. So um, all these queens are safe from each other because um, they're place in a certain way so that they cannot attack each other. So for example, if the input is 4, uh, there's two solutions. And within these two solutions, within these, within these two solutions the queens are not um, in reach of another queen. And as you can see, both of these solutions are kind of similar except for their mirrored image of each other. So if you either flip them horizontally or vertically, you get the same result. So um, they are uh, symmetrical across the origin. Um, okay, so um, so let's start with this. Um, so I'm thinking about solving this function, this problem recursively. Um, so we can have a function that takes in uh, a row that we want to try to place a queen and that what that function will do is it will return all the possible solutions um, of placing a queen by attempting to place a queen in all the different columns that it can place in. So um, that would then solve the problem cursively by trying to place a queen on the next row. So the function would, for a given row, the function would try to place a queen on all of the eight columns and then um, call the recursive function with that queen placed for the next row. All right, so let's start by uh, copying this code and I think I'm gonna put in a coder pad so I can test it as I go. Um, so, uh, because this solve n queens takes only a number, I want a helper function so that we can also take in a row. So, let me call that solve n queens helper, and this will take in um, just the row number. And you say we might need the n. Um, I would say that we can just have that within the state of the class. So we can say self that n is equal to n, and we can call a self queen's helper, self n queen's helper, and we can assume that the board is at least of size one. Otherwise, if it's size zero, then there's no point of even doing the exercise. Um, so we'll call self n queen's helper with the first row and it's uh, with the call like this. So now solve n queen's helper um, would then be a recursive function where it would attempt to, uh, I guess, try to place a queen in each of the columns uh, for this specific row. So let's start with that. Um, so the number of the column, the possible columns are basically 0 to n minus 1. So I'll loop over that. So for column in self dot n, and we want to range over this. Uh, this is Python 2, so I'll do x range. And now I want to see if it's actually safe to put this queen in this row column position. So I'll have a help function to check if it's safe. So let me do if self dot um, safe uh, safe is safe. 
I'll just use camel case because this whole thing is camel case. So is safe. Uh, I'll pass in the row and column. And if it is safe, then I need to place the queen. So let's see, place queen at this specific row column. And then I would want to call the helper function um, to get the solutions for the next row. So end queen helper. And I want to do row plus one. Uh, and this would return, this doesn't have to return a list. We can just assume that um, these functions will always append to a result. So let me add a result here. Great. And after we completed this, uh, after we completed going through this path, what we can do is we can get out of this. Uh, and then we have to move the queen so that um, as we go to the next column, the queen isn't there anymore. So I'll add the, I'll place the queen, I'll call the cursor function, and then I will remove the queen. And now uh, we should have the result within self dot results, self dot result. Um, so let me call this self dot results, and then I will return self dot results. A couple of things that I am missing is a base case here, and another thing I'm missing is two functions place queen I remove queen and it is safe so let's work on um, place queen first so um, place queen row column uh, what we need here is we need some sort of object that represents the board. Uh, one way of doing this is having just a 2D array of uh, positions, and then we could um, modify the positions that have a queen there with a, I guess, a true or false value. So if true exists, then the queen exists there. Another way of doing this is um, we could instead just keep track of the, all the positions of the queens. So that would be more efficient because we would only have, we only require n space versus n squared space. So um, let me have an object of queens and we can make this into an array for now. So. Uh, it will be an array of positions of where the queens are. So self dot self dot let's see uh, self dot queens dot append row column and I want to append the tuple row column and then to remove queen I want to call a remove function but to remove from a list is actually kind of expensive. It will have to look over through every element one by one to check if that element, uh, to find the element then remove it. Uh, so that's O of n, but if I use a set instead, uh, then the remove and add functions will be much faster. So let's use a set, and I'll use the add here, and I'll use a remove here. Great. So now I need to think of the uh, function called is safe and so is safe um, is a function that returns true or false and it will determine if it is safe to place a queen at this row column position so to do this what we can do is we take this row column position provided and we'll loop over all the queens to see if uh, there are any conflicts. And um, let's see. Okay, uh, this should be simple. So we'll loop over all the queens for queen in South South Queens. Um, and if any queen position matches the row, or any queen position matches the column, that would not be safe because uh, they will attack each other.
So since queen is just a tuple of row column, let me destruct the queen. Uh, so queen row and queen column is equal to queen. And now I can even put that in here like this. Um, and now if queen row is equal to queen column, whoops, queen row is equal to row, then this is not safe. I can, the same can be uh, uh, applied for there. So if queen column is equal to column, return false. Let's see if something happening right here. Let's see. Oh, I see. Alright. Alright, so if queen column is equal to column, and return false. And now let's check diagonals. Uh, diagonals are a bit more difficult, but um, let me try to pull up a couple examples. So let me move this. Alright, so so none of these are diagonally attacking each other, but if I replace all these two dots, then let's say I have a queen here and a queen here. Uh, these are diagonally touching each other. And this position is 0, 0, and this position is a 3, 3. So one way of checking if they're diagonally against each other is that if the difference of their positions are equal to, if the x difference and the y difference are the same, then they are diagonally different. So in here, 3 minus 0 and 3 minus 0 would be 3, 3. Um, the x and y differences are the same, therefore they are touching each other. This, I can uh, do an example where it's um, a little bit more subtle, or like it doesn't start at 0, 0, it starts at 0, 1. And uh, 2, 3. So this is 0, 1, and this is 2, 3. And if you take the difference, 2 minus 0 is 2, 3 minus 1 is 2. So differences are the same. Um, now we can think about the other case. That was when the queens are at a 135 degree angle. But if they're at a 45 degree angle, something similar can be said. Uh, but this time, the differences are have the same magnitude, but, they're, um, but the sign is different. So here the queen is at 0, 3. And here the queen is at 2, uh, 2, 1. And now if we take the difference here, this is 2. The difference here is negative 2. So their uh, signs are different, but their magnitude is the same. So generally speaking, if we want to put those two conditions together, we can say that if the magnitude of the x and y differences are the same, then the queens are um, at diagonals of each other. So uh, if we want to write that in code, we would do if queen row minus row, and we want to take the absolute value of this. If this is equal to absolute value of queen row, I'm sorry, queen column minus column, we want to return false. All right, and if all these checks for all these queens are passed, then this position is safe position to go. So I'll return true. And now I just have to think of a base case. Um, so the base case would be if the current row that we're trying to place a queen in is um, the last row, then we're going to have to put one more queen and we'll call the recursive count function one more time. And if then we are off the board, we don't have to place any more queens, then we solve the problem. So uh, let's say if row is equal to self to n plus 1, no, it's just self to n because we're at 0 index. So if this is the case, then we want to take the set of queens and we want to save that somewhere because we, we want to return them. So we want to do self dot results and we want to add the state of the queens. But since the problem states that we want to output this board, uh, we have we need some function to convert 
the queens to this board. So let me call this function uh, self dot convert queens to board, and I take the set of queens, and then I just add that to our result by doing self dot result dot pen. And now let me write this function, and I think this is the last function that we have to do. This will take in self, uh, same as all these functions, they should all take in self as well. So let's see, self, and this takes in a set of queens, but since we have the queens in our object, we don't need uh, to pass it in. So I do for queen in uh, actually I'll loop over the n by n object, then um, then uh, fill in the queens. Okay, so for x in let me do for row in self dot n when do x range, and now for column in x range self dot n. There's two scenarios. Um, if the row and column has a queen in it, so if this row and column is has a queen, and we can check that if it's in a set of queens, then we want to indicate there's a queen here. Uh, otherwise. Uh, queen is not here, and um, we have to. While we're doing this, we have to construct the board. So let's say our board is equal to um, an array for now. Uh, what we will want to do is we want to return a two D array, or not two D array, but array of strings. So our row board row would be an empty. Um, uh, string and as we're looking over the columns, we'll we'll add a dot or a p a dot or a q, depending if it's a queen. So it, since there's a queen here, I will add a q, and since there's no queen here, I'll add a dot. And now, at the end of the row, uh, at the end of looking over the rows, I can then add this board row to this board I have. So board dot append board row and uh, I don't want this and at the very end I can return board and this board gets returned and then it gets appended to the results and then eventually we will return the results all right great this looks good um let me try to run this with a size and a uh, size four so we have the first construct the solution objects. Then we have to call solve queen's helper. Oh uh, no no. We want to solve solve n queens. And let's pass in four and let's print out the results. Alright, let's see how it goes. Alright, great. So it looks like this is working um, properly. Now let's compare that with the Example output. So there's two outputs, and then uh, let's compare that. So two is in the second column, then last column, then first column, then third column. Third column, first column, last column, second column. So yeah, so this is working properly. Uh, let's try this with um, eight, and see what happens. So we do get a solution. Um, it finishes in 1.33 seconds. Uh, so this is a working solution. There are several uh, improvements that we can do to this solution, but I'm pretty happy with it right now. So I will try to submit it and see how it goes. So first I'll run the code. And then uh, it seems to work for this uh, submit it. And then, um, great. So. It's faster than 40% of solutions, but um, there's I know that there's still a lot more to improve. So, um, but I'm so happy with the solution as it is because uh, I think it's quite readable. But yeah, thank you.